Metallica are one of the biggest names in metal, and honestly, I've never really gotten into them. There's only one album I enjoy all the way through, and that's Ride the Lightning. The rest are kind of hit or miss. I mean, I grew up in the 90s where they just released their self-titled Black album, which a lot of people consider to be one of their better albums, but honestly, it just kind of bored me. It, it just didn't really do anything for me, and I heard it on every rock radio station growing up. Uh, you know, other than Enter Sandman, there really wasn't much to draw me to Metallica in general. And I, you know, always kept hearing that people were saying they were better in the 80s, they did a lot better job. And I went back through the discography. I mean, admittedly, it's been fairly recently that that actually happened. Because, again, they never really did anything that made me want to run and start listening to Metallica. But I found Ride the Lightning and I really enjoyed that album. The rest just one way or another falters for me. I mean, they have some good songs on there, but overall there's just no album that really does it for me, that really just makes me see what other people see in, in Metallica overall. And it's just that, you know, I've given them a chance, I've, I've heard what they've done, you know, and then I, of course, like I said, I grew up in the 90s, and of course you get into the 2000s and you hit with uh, 2003's St. Anger, and that album was just by any standards, really bad. It's often considered one of the, the definitely the worst Metallica album, one of the worst metal albums of all time. It's just a horrible mess overall. Enough said about their whole history. This brings us to their brand new album called Hardwire to Self-Destruct, and it's the 10th studio album that we get from the band. Now, before we even start talking about the music, there's three things about this that I kind of want to address before I even start getting into things on here. The first thing is the artwork on this album. It's a color, like psychedelic picture of all their faces matched into one. And I don't know what they were going for with it. I don't like it. I just, it's weird. I don't know if they're trying to be artsy or edgy or what, but it just does not work as artwork. I mean, there's nothing that I see a picture of and that's gonna make me suddenly wanna to listen to this album or it's not gonna capture my attention. It just looks weird for the sake of weird and that's not something that I like. The second thing I wanna talk about before we even head to the music is the fact that this is split into two CDs for absolutely no reason whatsoever. The entire thing cocks in at about 79 minutes with the first album taking up just 38 minutes and the second album, the second CD taking up 41, the remaining 41 minutes of that. Which, and I'll get to this, there's no point to it as far as being split and there was no reason for there to be two CDs, they just, it makes no sense whatsoever. I don't know why they did that. There's no reason that I can see, or so far anybody else has found, as far as why this is split when it easily could have fit on one CD, period. And lastly, the third thing I want to mention is the name itself, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. It's Hardwired sounds kind of cool. That sounds metal. That sounds like a, a decent album. Hardwire to self-destruct just sounds too drawn out. It's just, it, it doesn't have the same impact that I think it would have if they had just gone with hardwired or, or even just self-destruct, something like that. And I, I don't, there's just a lot of creative choices even before we start getting to the music that just don't make any sense on this album. So uh, now we've talked about that, onto the music itself. So how is the music on this album? Well, it's kind of a mixed bag overall. The first disc is really the stronger of the two, but even there it stumbles a bit uh, at, at some points. The opening track, which has the same name as the album Hardwire, is absolutely fantastic. This is the track they released to announce the album, and it's really what kind of caught my attention because it was back to the fast-paced shredding that they had started with, and it reminded me of kind of the 80s Metallica, stuff like that, and I really enjoyed that. Um, there were some awkward vocal delivery moments on the track, and the drumming isn't so great on that track, but other than that, it powers through that. It really gives you that classic sense of Metallica, and I really like that about that particular song. It made me want to actually listen to this album and definitely get into it. 
The other track they released, the next track on this album called Atlas Rise, is actually another strong song. It's not as fast paced, it's definitely slower overall. It's not my favorite track off this album, but it is a very, very strong track. It just is, uh, like I said, it's a bit slower than um, the, the first song, Hardwired, and a bit slower. It's more reminiscent of things that they did in the uh, the 90s or so. The following track up to that, Now That We're Dead, is kind of more grungy, sing-songy, side of Metallica. Um, I don't hate that song, but I don't particularly like it that much. It's okay. I can see people enjoying that a lot. I can I can definitely pick up things in there that they do very well on that track that I can see people being drawn to, but it's just not the song for me in particular. Um, not something that I really like so much. I think it kind of stumbles a bit during the chorus, um, but overall, it's actually a very decent song. I don't, like I said, I don't have anything particularly don't like hate about it or anything. It definitely does its job fairly well. The other track, another track that they also released leading up to this album called Moth Into the Flame, is actually another song that I do enjoy. Uh, it's not, again, it's not something that if they had released just this song that I would have been drawn to the album in particular. I, I don't love this track, but it's grown on me over time, and it is definitely a track that I can listen to all the way through. Uh, it's again it has this weird moment of vocal delivery awkwardness towards the bridge and then it leads into this guitar solo point that just feels awkwardly placed in the song i guess is the best way to put it but overall the track is very strong i do like it i think a lot of people will like that that song overall the track dream no more is kind of a groovier track i i like it it's again more reminiscent of the kind of 90s grunge style uh, that they they had, except I personally I feel it's better than what they did in the 90s. The final track off of this CD called Halo on Fire is more of a ballady track, and I'm not really a fan of it at all. I I don't hate it. Again, I don't think it's particularly a bad song in any way. I just don't like it. it it's not for me. It just bores me. I, I don't know what it is about it, but overall, it just kind of uh, just just bores me, and I'm not a huge fan of that. So, how about that second disc? Well, uh, yeah, not really much to say about the second disc. It's not that good. It's uh, the first song off there, "Confusion," actually comes in pretty decently. It's got this pretty awesome, strong guitar riff that carries it through. I like it. It's just, it's too long of a song. There's no reason for the song to have been as, as long as it is. They easily could have accomplished the, the same thing within three or four minutes. Uh, and I think it would have been a stronger song for that if they had actually kept it shorter and more contained. It just kind of gets all over the place at times. And I, I that's where it kind of gets away from me. But overall, I do like that song. Confusion is actually a decent song. The rest of it, not so much. I mean, it's just, it, there's nothing worth mentioning off the second disc. I mean, none of the tracks really stick with me. None of the tracks I think are anything to write home about. I mean, again, there, none of them are really offensively bad. It's just that they don't do anything. They don't, again, there's nothing memorable on there. But it, they just, it's, it's weird that that second disc the first disc is actually pretty strong, and then you get to the second disc, and it just all kind of falls apart. Up until the last track off of the second disc, which I think is probably one of the best Metallica songs I've, I've really ever heard, and definitely one of the best songs off of this album called Spit Out the Bone. It's a fantastic way to end the, the album because it is a faster pace. It's back to that faster riff. It's, it's darker. It's got an entirely different feel from the rest of the songs off of this disc, which are generally slower than they are uh, overall like even even sludgier and slower than they were in the the songs on the first disc and it's just there's there's such a drastic change in quality from the first disc to the second disc and that's what i that's what i'm talking about as far as i don't i don't see why they needed to make this two discs the the second disc really was pointless they could have cut out most of those tracks on the second disc and just 
kept on Confusion and spit out the bone, and it would have been a great album. I, I think this would have been a extremely strong album. But the fact that they include those songs on the second disc, which feel more like throwaway tracks or B-sides or if, if anything, and it just it kind of brings the whole thing down. It just, it doesn't really work overall and I don't understand why they went with it and why they actually included the the second disc on this, this album. Overall in this album, despite some moments of awkwardness, the vocal work is actually pretty strong on here. I actually really enjoy this uh, overall and it's probably the best that we've heard from James Hetfield over at least the last 10 or so years. Um, the guitars on this album are really riffy and punchy. I like that. The bass is, is definitely felt on this album. The drumming is fairly simplistic overall, which is about par for the course for this band. I mean, that's fairly standard. It's probably the weakest link out of all of them. I mean, it's not bad. It's just, like I said, simplistic. There's nothing really to write home about. And sometimes the songs feel like if the drumming had been a little bit better, that the overall song might have been a little bit better. However, when Lars Ulrich actually gets into the groove of things, it really, really hits you. And I, I think he does an excellent job overall and, you know, stays in his comfort zone, but definitely does it well. So Hardwired to Self-Destruct, is it a good album? Kind of. It, it, the first disc is definitely the stronger one. If you're gonna listen to anything, definitely stick with that one. The second disc it feels just like, a, a, like I said, a B-side throwaway. It's just it, it manages to actually drag things down to the the point where this entire album, taken in its entirety, if you really do consider it as a whole album versus two separate albums each disc it kind of drags it down into something that I would call, you know, that I would have probably called good or even great, down to something I'm really considering mediocre at this point, just because those songs are not that great. They, they really do enough damage to this album where you come off listening to the entire thing all the way through and just wondering what they were thinking. I mean, if, if this was meant to be two discs for a reason, I could understand that if it is supposed to be the first disc is the main album and the second disc is something else entirely, that would actually make a lot more sense to me just because of that shift in quality and the shift in tone of the songs overall. Like, Confusion and Spit Out the Bone are really the only two songs worth mentioning. I mean, that's why I haven't mentioned any other songs off of there because honestly, they escape my mind. I, I don't even remember listening to them other than just being completely bored out of my mind and just waiting for the song to end and they're just overstaying their, their time. So yeah, the album itself, I mean, if you're a Metallica fan, it's worth checking out. You're gonna hear a mix of their sound and you'll probably find something you like. If you're not a fan of Metallica, not a fan of metal, not a fan of hard rock even, probably not the album for you. It doesn't break any new barriers. It doesn't do anything new. They're not breaking out into pop territory or anything like that. They're not suddenly throwing in breakdowns and, and you know, the screaming and all that stuff. So it, it probably not the album that you're going to be looking for. But overall, I, it's hard. It's really hard to talk about this because I want to say that this album is great. I want to say that I really enjoyed it, but it's not fair because I only enjoyed the first out the first disc off of here. And I really enjoy that. And then there's the second disc. I know I keep saying that, but that's really what it comes down to is that second disc never should have been included. And it just wasn't necessary. It brings the whole thing down. So it, you want to definitely go ahead and check it out. It's worth, it's worth listening to. It is not a bad album. It is something that if you feel like, if you're waiting to see how people, other people react to it, to feel like if you if you should listen to it or not, I would say go out and listen to it. It is definitely worth it. You'll probably find some stuff that you like. You may find some stuff that you don't like. I mean, it's definitely not same anger. It's not going to piss you off. It's not offensively bad. It's just the worst of it is boring. And that's pretty much all I can say about this album. I mean, hopefully Metallic will kind of either come out and say why they went with two discs and maybe it'll make sense, or maybe they'll hit us with a brand new album that's just solid all the way through. 
Thank you so much for watching the review of Metallica's Hardwire to Self-Destruct. Don't forget to like the video, leave me your comments down below, and subscribe to the channel for more.